Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Hello there guys and girls, I hope you're all doing gosh darn well. My name is Mikey and welcome along to another episode of Draw with Mikey. Episode 129, I hope you're all doing bloody fine. Guys, this is the super long rambling midweek series. It's really casual, it's my opportunity to just sit down and relax for an hour with... Can you hear that? A lovely cup of tea. And basically just read through the comment section. It's my way of touching bases with you lovely people. So if you've got anything to say, add, ask, whatever it is, nothing's off topic. It doesn't just have to be art. Get yourself into the comment section below. And with any luck, I'll be reading it next time around. Um, really quick update, guys, just to let you know that, yes, this upcoming Sunday, the 20th of October, I am still doing the XP Pen Artist 12 tablet giveaway to one of my lucky subscribers on Twitch. There will actually be a runner-up prize of another drawing tablet as well so links in the description below make sure you are following me on twitch if you want a chance to win a tablet on the 20th why not get involved and um actually do you know what once this episode's out i might actually be live on twitch at this very moment playing spooky video games and chilling out so why not check it anyway guys just wanted to give you the reminder on that and in terms of updates at my end, don't worry, there's always a little bit of a ramble at the beginning. Not too much. I am going to Japan shortly. Uh, I think it is uh, sometime next week. Oh my god, that's about as specific I can be, yeah. I'm going to Japan sometimes next week. Oh shit, I need to book some accommodation. And uh, basically, guys, it means that with any luck... Um, I will try to make sure that we've got a Draw With Mikey episode coming out next Wednesday. Um, but there might not be one, and there definitely won't be one the week after. But then I'll be back and we'll do everything else. So there will be videos this Saturday, this weekend. Um, but next week you'll probably notice that there's not videos or um, there's just like some kind of pre-recorded stuff or something going on. But basically it's going to be a little bit up and down. But don't worry, it's all like, you know, premeditated because I'm going to be off recording um, basically a little bit of a sort of travelogue style thing about what can you do if you've got the one week rail pass in Japan. Where can you shoot to? What's really good to look at? And hopefully the typhoon hasn't bought it for everybody. So anyway, that's just what's going on at this end, guys. Nothing else much to report. Port. So as a pleasure as ever, I will be diving in and reading through your comments. Um, last week I asked you guys for your feedback on scary video games because I want to know what is good out there and it is obviously the spooky time so now is the best time to get into stuff even though I'm going to be playing scary video games I'm sure well out of October once I'm back in the country. Uh, but Thiessen says, play Minecraft, this game is terrifying. Holy shit, that has 115 likes. Is Minecraft terrifying? I think I've seen like a few meme bits from time to time where like, uh, you know, somebody's just going along down a cave and like monsters spawn out of nowhere in the dark or something. So you've got to be like super careful about that. Holy shit. Okay, Minecraft. I never had that one down on a fear factor. And Motivated Man says for girls knocking each other off on a floating platform using their bums is an anime called Keijo. Oh, it's Keijo. <laughs> so basically, guys, if anyone's new, I basically ask you for information all the time. You guys are what keep me in touch with the world. And I was asking last week, like, like what the hell is this? I know somebody will know what it is. Um, so yeah, bum and boob attack Keijo. Good to know, friends. Good to know. Um, oh, yeah. And by the way, uh, maybe you guys are working on whatever in the background, your own projects or homework or art things. Do certainly let me know. I always want to know what you guys are up to creatively. And uh, oh, in terms of a question. Uh, for this week. Hmm, can I think of anything remotely? Oh, yeah, here we go. Guys, so, and I don't know if I'm going to get around to it in October, but I will certainly be doing it sooner than later. Guys, talk to me about Monster Girls, not necessarily just Monster Mizume, um, but basically what are the best or the sexiest kind of, you know, the best waifu style Monster Girls, if that makes sense? Because obviously you guys probably know that my version of a terrible, awful one, which I don't want to be involved with, is the Spider Girl combination. But what are some really good, like, other ones? Because, in theory, like, the whole, like, uh, cow girl, kind of farm girl, sort of, you know, I'm just going to say milkers as a rough theme. <laughs> um, but, in theory, that's very wifeable. Um, but what else is out there? I know there's Snake Girl from Monster Mizume. You can't get away with that. Let's never talk about the Arachnid Girls ever again. There are cow girls. And then... Then it's just monsters, right? It's just IRL monsters, not IRL. Um, oh my god, the monster's downstairs on his third beer already, darling. They're not under the bed after all. No, but in terms of like IRL monsters, IRL, what I mean is um, monsters that exist in um, mythology already and then just doing hot waifu versions, you know, like waifu centaur, waifu medusa, waifu 
Hydra? How would that work? I don't know. We'll come back to that. But are there like other really good like monster girl animal combinations from anime and manga that I need to know about? So do get typing. Give me that sweet information, my friend. Thank you very much for helping me out. Uh, anyway, uh, Maddie says, I just finished drawing her and now you're posting this. Nezuko is so cute. Oh yeah, thank you very much. So guys, obviously I'm trying to just get into the sketchbook a bit more this month whilst it's on theme. Not necessarily just inking, but mostly inking. And uh, yeah, I was just doing some Nezuko um, studies, really rough kind of just pen sketchbook drawings of Nezuko the other week. And um, at the moment, I think for this Saturday, hopefully it'll be done in time, we're going to have some fan art of... Uh, Konoha Shinobu, the butterfly samurai uh, demon slayer from Demon Slayer, the anime manga, um, because basically I just can't really make myself do a lewd version of Nizuko. She's just too much of a lovely character, but we must protect. Um, however, that just means we're going to go hard on the looting of some of the other characters in the anime instead. So um, with any luck, that'll all be out. Uh, and in the background right now, just seeing as basically, guys, after the last drawing tutorial... Oh, we got sponsored! We got sponsored by NordVPN! Holy shit, that was good. Actually, maybe I've put a NordVPN link in this video as well. You know, just to bump those figures. Um, so basically, guys, uh, yeah, we were doing um, some curvy, how to like, you know, draw a curvy character from basic shapes. And the reason why I was just covering a bit of an old ground, but freshening it up and making for a newer video, is because we need to start talking about folds and wrinkles and materials, and then we need to talk about gesture, and then we need to talk about expressions of characters and body language and all sorts of things. So again, I'm just kind of like, um, you know, re-digging down to make sure all of the basics are covered in a as newer tutorial video as possible before we dive into the different ways that material can fold. There's three three main things, and then you can kind of combine them in a, a number of styles and ways, but I'll dive into that into a, another tutorial. Um, so anyway, what I'm saying is in the background of this, God, I'm such a rambler, in the background of this video today, you're just seeing me fill up a sketchbook page, just me practicing body shapes, just practicing drawing bodies, mapping the curves of those bodies and the surface, and just basically loads of that, loads of curvy torsos and different shapes, and just kind of um, diving into the pencil, uh, yeah, basically just a little bit of practice. Of course, remember this series, whatever you see in the background is whatever I just happen to be working on. Some of it might be good, some of it might be absolute junk, some of it might be in between. I make no apologies. The whole point of this series is just kind of sharing what I'm up to and uh, just accepting that some of it's going to be good, some of it's going to be bad, or some will just be me practicing female figure shapes. Uh, Wonky, I like your name, says, Mikey, can, draw, can you draw a lewd women, but I can't wrap my head around him? Oh, Mikey can draw lewd women, but I can't wrap my head around him swearing. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? If I do swear um, about stuff, but I'm just like getting really angry, that is very, very unlike me. I'm not actually somebody who gets too riled up. I'm relatively laid back as a human being. Um, but yeah, I do swear from time to time. You know, it's very adult around here, danger. Um, but yeah, I'm much more likely to draw lewd drawings in a friendly way than I ever am to actually swear. That being said, I think we got really angry. What do what did we talk about last time? The last time I really remember swearing was when I had all that kerfuffle with my Kindle and Amazon had put adverts on my Kindle and then explained that they often charge people to remove the adverts. Let's not start talking about that again. That makes me fucking angry. Oh my God, just YouTube search a draw of Mikey episode where I talk about Amazon Kindles or something. Oh my god. Okay, let's not go back to at all. Let's not turn this into Trigger Town. Uh, so guys, yeah, basically guys, tell me about some hot monstrous waifus, some, you know, good spooky waifu babes, just in terms of designs or in terms of existing mangas and animes that might be worth a little fan art in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, Daddy Norman says, I recommend The Promised Neverland if you want some thriller. Oh, dude, Daddy. So yeah, this is one where I'm actually really interested in reading the manga uh, more than trying to watch the anime. I've heard this manga being recommended to me before. Apparently it's proper dark. So just going to remind myself. I've always got a notepad file open these days, guys, to steal your ideas. So thank you very much. And the watch says, uh, the bum anime is called Kaijo. Hip Whip Girl. Oh, very nice. Hip Whip Girl. I like that combination. Hip Whip Girl would be a better title than Kaijo. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. You know, I knew most of you guys and girls would be aware of what anime <laughs> that was. Sketchy Forts says, the scariest game might be Outlast. Oh god, yeah, okay, so I'm asking you guys for scary video games. I am actually familiar with Outlast and what that is, and that is too scary. That's actually just, just a bit too scary for me. I have to keep playing Dead Space 2 because we've started, so I must finish. Uh, but I keep putting it off for more gentle atmospheric games, but Outlast... Um, a lot of people want me to play Outlast in VR, and I think the only way I would ever do that is if we were going to do a charity fundraiser, because I absolutely would not be doing that for my own personal pleasures. Uh, but for indie games, you continue to say, I suggest Celeste. Hey, Sketchy, thank you very much. 
yeah guys i'm always after your video game knowledge hit me up okay oh i've just lost the page let's scroll back to it lovely uh, agent lima says me a massive castlevania fan here's mikey has not watched the castlevania show me what nanny uh, probably explains why i've not seen any alucard trevor or cypher fan art on the channel Agent Lima, yeah, I'm so sorry. P.S. My own art is on hold because I'm trying to finish my Master Chief costume for Halloween. Oh, dude, awesome. How's that going? Oh, let me know, let me know. Uh, nine months in the... Nine months in the making! Mate. Jesus, you sound like you're um, entering a finalist cosplay competition. Dude, I hope that's going very well, man. Uh, yeah, Castlevania. I need to add that to the list of, I guess, anime. Hmm. Is there a Castlevania manga? Obviously, I'm aware that it's a video game, but maybe we talked about this last week. Uh, Dutch Bandit says Alien Isolation and Dead Space. Dutch Bandits, both of those games I have actually played. They are great suggestions. Alien Isolation is fantastic. And I'll tell you what, if there's a bit of a geek or a nerd in any of you that's really interested, um, there's a really interesting YouTube video about the two different layers of artificial intelligence they give the alien. <clears throat> There's one where there's like this editing AI program. Oh, I'm just going to sip this tea. My voice is gone funny. Oh, it's so delicious. <clears throat> Far me. There we go. There's basically one where um, there's this editor AI that knows where you are in the game and uh, kind of increases or decreases the amount that the alien will randomly be in your area. And then there's the alien alien AI where it doesn't know where you are, but it's just more likely to search in certain places depending on how scary the game tries to make it. It's super like reactive and clever. So I do recommend actually checking out this video. Um, but yeah, that game terrified me. It had me on edge. The suspense was incredible. Um, however, I would say that game is definitely one quarter too long if that makes sense. I was really, really into it. <clears throat> and then there's a bit, don't worry, no spoilers. There's a bit where basically you start up a reactor and it kind of changes the nature of the game a little bit. And most of the bits after there, towards the very end of the game, I was kind of just like, uh, okay, we're kind of getting through it now. It's a little bit less high-end stressful than the first you know, three quarters of the game were. But yeah, very, very good game. Uh, also, Dead Space, you say? Yeah, I've played Dead Space. Dead Space I played on the original the original channel. So I've got a gaming channel, Mega Mega 2, which is nothing more than just an archive for the uh, Let's Plays on Twitch. But um, I played on this channel, uh, Dead Space, and I made a um, Scream compilation from all of the footage on there. It's just me shitting my pants. And that Scream compilation got stolen by Deity Microphone, this audio production company. Uh, and they just used it in their advertising footage. And they're just like, this is the sound of true fear. And it's just me screaming to Dead Space. But these guys, Deity Microphone, didn't work on Dead Space. They worked on Dead Space Free, the shit one. And they're just like, yeah, this guy's playing Dead Space Free. Buy our Deity products. And I was just like... You bunch of tosses. Thank you so much for stealing my footage to sell your products. Oh, man. Scumbags. Screw Deity Microphone. I'm going to be a road boy for life. Um, yo, it's Steve, says anime recommendation. Monster. It's very drama and plot heavy with a lot of turns and twists. Oh, okay. Yo, it's Steve. Thank you very much. I'm going to add that to the list. And Gabby Johnson says, you should watch the Dororo 2019 remake. It was by far one of the best animes to come out this year. So, two things, Gabby, thank you very much. Two things that I've um, been hearing a lot. Dororo and also Inuyashiki. People have been telling me about this. Uh, what is that reminding me of, of a video game that's not Dororo? Oh, Danganangadompa. I hear that's another good puzzle game to play as well. Um, Arian Deathstone says, hey, Mikey. Hello there, Arian. I hope you've had a lovely week. Yeah, not too bad, dude. Uh, sip your beautiful liquid, so will I. <coughs> oh, my God. I just got a tickle in my throat just as I read that. I'm so sorry. That was hardly the sipping sound effect I'm sure you wanted to hear. Hmm. There we go. Now I'm a happy chappy. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Very, very busy. Um, because I haven't planned for the, uh, you know, Japan trip that I've just said because it's a work thing. Uh, and I just never get around to planning it in my life. Anyway, I wanted to tell you on how to draw... Oh. I wanted to tell you... Uh, to that I own a copy of How to Draw Manga by Christopher Hart and it didn't personally help me. Some other drawing YouTubers also said that it wasn't so good, so I don't use it anymore. Dude, okay, so obviously we've covered this in great detail last week anyway, but um, yeah, it sounds like my gut reaction, based on what you've just said, uh, based on the visuals, might actually, you know, hold true. I'm going to tell you something. In terms of Mikey being wise and knowing life stuff, which I'm not in any way whatsoever, guys. I'm just old. Um... When I was younger, I used to kind of go by my gut reaction, and it just made me a bit of a weird kid. 
And then when I was kind of growing up and like coming out of uni and doing a load of office work, I learned to like learn office stuff, learn a very set method for appraising people and appraising stuff and tasks and kind of not listen to my gut feeling because, you know, you can't just say, well, you seem like a dodgy fuck. I don't want to work with you on this project. Instead, you have to be like, well, I can't argue that they're a dodgy fuck because, you know, their business profile says this. And then it just led to all this hassle and it basically leads towards groupthink, which I despise with all my heart. Um, and then now that I'm just doing what I want to do, I'm just, I've completely gone back to just following just my gut feeling again, except not kid, not um, caring, but it makes, makes me come across as a weirdo sometimes in, when you don't kind of like, you know, conform to social situations or you come across as rude. But I'll tell you what, man, it was, I had it when I was a kid, following my gut. And now I, as an adult, I've learned to follow my gut again. And all that middle stuff was just an absolute pain in the ass. Anyway, what the fuck am I talking about? Where are we going with this? Um, anyway, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So yeah, uh, Arian. Uh, yeah, so basically my gut reaction when I was seeing that Christopher Hart book is this just not for me. And then, yes, it might be post-rationalization following your comment. But yes, indeed, it looks like I should have trusted myself again. Excellent. Uh, anyway, also, I wanted to tell you a story that happened to me today. Oh, my God, it better be a quick one. A friend of mine asked me to take a lewd picture of her. Oh, oh, God, I pray to Christ you guys are over 18. She wanted a crawling picture, and I almost finished, but I couldn't do the hands, which is why I made the request. Oh, God, oh, right. Oh, like drawing a picture. I thought this story was starting with you saying, so basically, my friend took off her clothes and asked me to be her photographer. Uh, then I started to contemplate life, thinking about other stuff, until I looked back at a picture, and damn, was my first thought. My second was, oh, I got really good. And my last was, damn, I could draw my own porn at this point. Trust me, it's less fun than you think. When you draw your own, like, uh, erotic stuff, because, you know, I've done I've done some stuff for Patreon, um, you do not find it sexy. We've talked about this before. Like, uh, you cannot get off to your own artwork because, uh, and I'm like, nothing against hentai, nothing against anybody's pr particular preference. This is, of course, a very safe space. Um, and I've definitely seen my eye for, I'm not pretending I'm innocent, but like, um, I still default to IRL pornography, if that makes sense. I'm still like, a, not vanilla, you know, those, those search tabs are pretty filthy sometimes. But like, uh, I definitely pick real people, especially amateur stuff. Oh my God, maybe I should be telling you my porn preferences. Well, the thing is, no, I'll, I'll tell you. The thing is, the porn industry seems to be fucking horrific. And like, I want to get my rocks off, absolutely. But I also don't want to like, encourage things where, you know, women are treated like shit. And like, especially like, when people get into it at 18, that's still a relatively vulnerable age to get taken advantage of. So uh, amateur stuff, homemade stuff, that's where the magic is. Because you can tell the people are really into it, and then I'm very pleased. <laughs> You're going to hear the best secrets right now, guys. Um, anyway, that's my long way around of just coming back to, um, yeah, IRL people more than hentai, for me personally. But again, you know, never say never. Um, but the thing is, is like, um, when you draw your own stuff, you're not, you might be able to... Uh, kind of look at it and say to yourself okay this is a you know pretty sexy looking image I've managed to get the boob curve really well here I've got loads of shine on the skin it's really accentuating some bum the pose is super sexy but you don't find it attractive if you've made it all you see is like how much hard work you've put into it you're just like yeah I had to work really hard to make this happen and get that to look there and it's just like you just see the effort that you've done but it doesn't like actually process through the same part of your brain it's really curious i've no idea why but uh that has always been the case anyway dude i'm glad you're uh, reaching a point where you could do that i just hope you're over 18 so i don't want to be talking to some kid about drawing smart anyway max 2802 or 2082 i should say says the game that he's talking about is blasphemous the anime is keijo i believe which looks a little too ridiculous for me to watch blasphemous Yes, so Max, thank you very much. So I was asking you guys, what was that game that I'm trying to think of? And it was Dark Souls, but in like a 2D scrolling Dark Souls. But it was 2D scrolling 8-bit Dark Souls. Blasphemous. I do actually want to give that a try. Looks like something definitely worth a play. Thank you very much, dude. And Lobskyo says, I'm surprised that no one here is recommending the FNAF series. Not the scariest game, but it also has its own charm. Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, dude, I, I know that game is terrifying. I've never, ever played it. Way back in the day when PewDiePie first played the first one, I remember thinking, oh, that looks like high-pressure fear monger. But I just never really wanted to kind of sit down and get into it. I guess back then, obviously now, I've, because I'm asking you guys for it, I'm a little bit more open to the idea of playing shorter video games and indie video games. Um, but back then, my idea of a good video game was an RPG with loads of really interesting storyline and plot. So something that's a bit more simpler just really didn't reach out to me. But now, in my infinite wisdom, maybe I should go back and give a FNAF a little go. Hmm. At least the first one, maybe. 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe. We'll see how we feel. Uh, Madhav Shida here says, well, there is the Outlast... The, sorry, let me try that again. Well, there we go. There is the Outlast series if you want another heart attack. Yeah, Outlast is on the shelf for me, guys. I'm not going to dive into that anytime soon. Like like I was saying, I really enjoyed playing Alien Isolation, even though it terrified me. De Dead Space just made me scream a lot and really, really terrified me. And both of those games would like make my chest feel really tight and I could feel like my heart going hard or something and then like maybe there's years off the end of my life now like maybe I was going to make it to 70 but now I'm going to be lucky to see 60 at this age so I think those video games are really getting to me and I think it made part of my beard go grey anyway it's my way of saying like I might not be the world's like ballsiest person when it comes to scary video games I might be a bit of a pussy uh, Seb's Art says the best emoto of the ever Oh, the best younger sister ever. Yeah, yeah, of course, Nezuko. I love Demon Slayer. Do a piece that embodies the urge to protect Nezuko. If you do a sexy art piece, even if it's aged up, just be aware of the controversy. Some artists and even cosplayers that have aged up sexy Nezuko got a lot of undeserved shit. Oh, God, there's always that sort of stuff. Apparently, so I never really heard until recently about that massive, for any of you guys who know your comic books more than manga, um, somebody did like a pose of Spider Gwen in like the Spider pose, i.e. coming towards us, but sort of on all fours. And apparently it like kicked off this massive controversy back in the day and the artist got loads of shit for it. And here I am making like clapping cheeks thick thigh Spider Gwen, but because I'm doing it to an anime crowd, the anime kind of audience that we, what, well, the anime appreciating kind of audience that we have here on the channel, uh, tend not to get wrapped up in all the comic skate sort of stuff that also happened on the other side. Um, so I think I'm very fortunate. Apparently I've been dodging bullets and I never even realised I was. Um, so yeah, in a re really similar vein, like uh, I'll do a grown up and sexy Nezuko if I want to, but oddly enough, I actually don't just because I really liked how she was portrayed in uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba. But dude, yeah, I do actually have vaguely in mind a Nezuko fan art I want to do. And it's, you know, it's going to be like a break from big boobs. It's just going to be me doing some more painting experimentation stuff. But yeah, I do actually um, kind of want to tackle that. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for the warning, dude. Uh, first PC ferret. Ah, the first PC ferret indeed. I love you, your icons, just a close-up of a ferret's face. I, I quite like ferrets. I quite like ferrets and weasels. Um, um, you know, not actually having them. I quite like playing with them, but then, you know, you give them back to the owner. Because I'll be honest, if you've got a cage of ferrets, your house is going to smell. Um, but the ones that really do it for me in terms of the long strokeables, otters. Bloody love otters. I think otters might be my favourite animal. Anyway, uh, sidetrack. Uh, games on Steam. Call of Cthulhu, Actung, Cthulhu Tactics, and Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Oh shit, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Dude, thank you very much. I'm going to copy all of this. Ah, oh, fuck. I vaguely remember seeing like a clip of that game um, maybe a year or two ago, and it looked really, really intriguing. Dude, thank you very much for reminding me about Hellblade. Yeah, okay, we might have to definitely do that. Trav5 says, uh, you want a cool anime? The Count of Monte Cristo. The whole anime is like a holographic Pokemon card. Trav5, yes, yes, yes. I have not watched that all the way through, but I have watched the first episode, just because I'm familiar with the tale of The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, so I was like, oh, they've done an anime version and it's weird. And I remember just watching it and all that. And guys, if you've not, if you've got no idea what these guys, are, what Trav's talking about, um, give it a quick Google. It's a visual, like, really impressive thing. All of the characters' clothing are done on static overlays of pattern texture. So when they're walking around, the pattern texture on screen is solid in the background. But it kind of, like, strobes and kind of means their move. Oh, it's really good. It's, yeah, visually really, really stunning. Um... So it absolutely looks fantastic. Do I want to sit for another 26 anime kind of series? I'm assuming it's that long. Yeah, maybe I should give it a go. Because it's kind of like it's set in space with like space vampires and mysterious beings, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, nice one, dude. Nice. Uh, Blue Wolf says, my scary game suggestion is Soma. It's really good. Its strongest point is by far the story. Oh, you've already got my attention then. And the concepts of science and philosophy that it deals with. Oh, read more. Uh, Love, Sam. Oh, there's a whole list, Blue Wolf. Thank you. Love, Sam is a surprisingly amazing horror game. It has a lot of reading, but the scary parts are oh so good. The story is amazing, too. Try not to search too much about it, because it's just a small spoiler can ruin it. Okay, brilliant. I know nothing about it, and I'm glad you've told me not to Google it first. That also sounds interesting. Uh, I've 
don't know anything about Soma, but I was considering getting Soma from a load of other people's suggestions already. Uh, so mm, this could be good. Uh, Home Sweet Home is a Thai horror game, which is really fun because it's unique. Guys, I'm so sad that I still can't play. Guys, what was that horror game that um, China review bombed? Because it had one of those, you know, Li Xi Jinping looks like we need a poo bits in it. So basically, it was a really good horror game. It's about a guy and his kid, and he joins a cult that live out of their apartment building. And it's all about dealing with kind of grief and guilt or something. And it looked fucking awesome. And then they had to pull it off steam because it had some anti-Chinese government sentiment. Which, if you've been uh, listening to topical internet these days, is, you know, another thing that's back on the radar. Anyway, uh, Home Sweet Home Thai horror game would be worth it. Okay. And White Day. This one is Korean. Of course, you can play it on English. But it's really good because it deals with a lot of different and unique ghost tales. Blue Wolf. This is a great list of suggestions. I'm familiar with Soma, and you've just made all the others sound interesting. Thank you very much for that really brief overview. Uh, Colton Cabale says, Fire Force is my anime recommendation. Season 1 just ended, and I freaking loved it. Oh, really? So I was under the impression... So if I'm going to take a note of Fire Force. I was under the impression that in terms of recent anime, the only things worth watching were The Promised Neverland, um, Demon Slayer, obviously. Uh, Doctor Stone is really popular. Yeah, only three currently out, currently worth watching anime. Maybe there's another version of JoJo's that's live right now that I'm not aware of. Um, but yeah, okay, Fire Force. Okay, added in good, sir. And The Watch says, whilst watching and listening to this, I'm colouring in a picture of uh, Bakugo and Kirishima from BNHA to help with colour blending. BNHA? BNHA. Beyond Haven? Mm. Okay, let me Google this really quickly because I have no idea what that is. Do 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 Put your pony outside, I can't hear y'all. If you got small hands, put your hands up. Sorry, this is my holding music. So guys, um I might become a uh complaints hotline for another streamer. Uh, this is just some banter we're having. Uh, and if you call through to the Mikey Mega Mega hotline where I deal with your complaints, uh it's just me going, You are number five in for call. Your call is important to Mikey. But then it's also me live singing the whole music. Get your hands up! What? What? I can't hear y'all! I'll be doing um, loads of hits from the old Westwood albums from the 90s. Like, uh... Oh, gonna make me lose my mind Up in here, up in here Oh, gonna make me act a fool Up in here, up in here You know, like DMX and all the great hits. So it will be me just not actually helping you and live singing. And then when I'm done with my song, I'll decide to take your complaint. Anyway, sorry, it's a bit of a sidetrack. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, guys. I keep telling myself, do not sing when you're doing a DWM. I just can't. It's like an illness. Anyway, guys, uh, let me just Google this. Bakugo from Bunha. I've typed in Bunha. Oh, oh, Bakugo, my hero. Wait, what? What? Oh, Boku no Hero... Wait, what? What the fuck am I looking at? Oh, it is Boku no Hero Academia. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so... Guys, I cannot believe I did not get that. Oh, shit. Maybe that should have been the fourth, a fourth anime that people are still watching. Because it's like... Series 3 or Series 4 has come out? Okay, so I have to acknowledge that that one's also really popular. I've still not given it a proper watch, though. Dude, I'm so sorry. I just did not click in my head. But then again, um, because I haven't actually watched the anime, I don't know who those characters are. Thank you very much, though, dude. Salt Bunny says, A little indie game that I know of is Dream of Gluttony. It's cute, but it gets a bit gory. Gory in the second playthrough. <gasps> Two playthroughs, one dream. Two playthroughs, one cup. Careful. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Salt Bunny. And Cody Dean says, Side Scroller Dark Souls is called Salt and Sanctuary. Oh, I thought it was called Blasphemous. Wait, Salt and Sanctuary? Am I? Is there more than one that I want to check out? Images. Oh, shit. No, this was not what I was thinking of at all. But I'm going to leave this tap open because it looks very curious. All right, nice one. Maybe this is like a whole genre. Uh, Karak says at 3 minutes 59, I get it, man. Nezuko is for pats. Um, no, but really, I don't know why everybody I know does lewd fan art. Who's Oh, everybody you know who does lewd fan art has refused to do Nizuko in anything too lewd, yourself included. It's amazing, really. Yeah, do you know what? I think that's just a little bit of good testament to the anime. Because one of the most emotional parts I got from the anime, because I'm going to be honest. As far as I'm concerned, every single episode of Kimetsu no Yaiba or Demon Slayer goes something like this. 
Um, your main man. Oh my god, why have I forgotten his name already? Uh, Tanjiro. There we go. Your main man, Tanjiro. Basically, he has empathy for demons, or he believes in somebody, or he believes in something that can be good, or has the possibility to be good. And then the second thing is he takes a beating, or he gets bullied really hard, or beaten up by an enemy because of that belief. And then the third thing is, regardless of a beating, he still holds that belief. And then the fourth thing is, like, some dust gets in my eye, or, like, I start chopping onions, I don't know. Like, tears start coming out of my eyes, but it's, it's just dust, don't worry about it. But one of the, like, most emotional moments in that anime, or, like, one of the ones that really got to me is when um, he's with, not even demons of all things, but fucking demon slayers, where they're basically trying to test Nezuko. And he's just like, oh. Basically, every episode is him just going, Nezuko! Nezuko! <laughs> and I was just like, leave her alone! <laughs> getting really emotional um so yeah it's literally because of that like the anime got it triggered me just enough it got under my skin and it made me enjoy it just enough but i'm not up for eluding her basically yeah so i think that's probably happened to a load of people who draw like spicy fan arts they're just like nah not nezuko a uh, free running fun time says hellblade senuous sacrifice oh brilliant that's the second person who's mentioned it nice one it's a short action psychological game or uh, game the game itself i recommend playing with headphones and the sounds and voices you'll hear will really start to mess with you Oh, brilliant. I do always play it with headphones when I do the scary horror game live streams as well. Uh, Gus Schoenmaker says, Mikey, I'm a beginning manga artist who draws on eye. I was thinking, if I redraw a manga artwork on eye, can I consider it as my own art? Um, you can consider it as your own work, but it's uh, somebody else's intellectual property and design. Um, but uh, it's certainly going to help with your technical skill. I fill my sketchbook with many, many pages of studies of looking at pictures of existing characters and just redrawing them and trying to get a feel for them and understand what is it about that image that really works? Have I nailed the line weight in this particular version that I'm trying to do? In my version of the eyes too far apart or like not quite placed as cutely as the rest of the features on the page. And I use that quite a lot to kind of help guide my general understanding of design um, by looking at stuff that really kind of speaks to me and breaking it down and trying to work out what is it about another piece that speaks to me? What is it that makes it work? Um, and obviously we were talking about this maybe last DWM episode or the episode before when we were talking about um, Western manga, Western Western how to draw manga girls books not really doing it for me because they don't hit that standard that I like. Um, so dude, um, I definitely would encourage you to do it. But um, no, if you're copying somebody else's art, it's not really your own art. However, um, you, can, you can copy a manga eye from a particular manga or something like that and then you can spend your time drawing manga eyes in the exact same style yeah that's absolutely fine like you can't like everybody's done almost everything so like somebody's always going to have done something that you're probably trying so you don't worry too much about that um and it's kind of picking from here and there so because your question is just about an eye you see an eye from a particular manga you're studying eyes you draw that eye that's not really enough however um, if you pick from a number of sources to build up your entire overview of how you like your manga characters, you might come up with an entire character creation. It's got like the hair that's a bit more of a manga style from Dragon Ball, but uh, the thing that really kind of gives it a lot of attention is you've drawn the eye in a very similar way that you might find in, um, you know, Demon Slayer, but the overall costume design and combat techniques of your character are a bit more akin to Naruto, except your shading style is really gothic and dark as if it belongs to Berserk. Then you're kind of reaching into loads of sources and you're using those different sources to inspire something that is your own that is an amalgamation of your own experiences and visual input to create something else entirely um so it's all about the context how much do you borrow and how much do you keep and how much do you take away and how many sources do you do that from um but in terms of just drawing draw away and draw to your heart's content but if you're worried about the ownership of one single eye in a drawing i'm going to suggest you need to keep drawing a lot more and worry about some slightly larger topics overall when it comes to artwork it's a great start um but trust me you need to be drawing hundreds of different eyes and hundreds of different heads and uh just get it out of the way not everything you need to worry about the ownership of just get your practice in and start to uh, think a bigger picture something like that i think that might be like a really bad answer and explanation but in there is an idea i promise you just have to kind of you know swill it around a little bit and floss uh d kovec 09 says game recommend little nightmares it's not the scariest one but it is very creepy and mysterious Oh, dude, so guys, um, I just played Limbo uh, live on Twitch uh, for, for the last couple nights. 
And uh, some people during the live stream were saying that I would like Little Nightmares as well. I've got Limbo. Well, we've done Limbo now. And I've also got the um, sequel, well, the spiritual successor, shall we say. Much like how GoldenEye's spiritual successor on the N64 was Perfect Dark, because it was a similar vibe, same engine, made by Rare. Um, the spiritual successor to Limbo, and I just keep saying that because I've forgotten the name, I do have that to play as well. But somebody was saying, break that up, play Little Nightmares, and then go back and play the other game. So yeah, thank you very much for that suggestion. Little Nightmares are on my list. Uh, Desania 9 says, I've seen all of the JoJo's so far, and I cannot wait to see Jolene. <gasps> a Jolene, a Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Take that sip of tea right now, my queen. <sighs> uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I've just, I've got such a long way to go. Now that I've, um, basically, I'm really into watching Star... Uh, battle tendency i should say so jojo's part two loving it i just i think i've talked about this the other time i really love some moments of that um i'm not going to rewatch stardust crusaders because it is two sets of 26 episodes if i remember correctly that anime series is way way too long i know it's crazy and fun but it's definitely too long and um i think the only thing i really need to do are watch the last two episodes maybe the first one or two episodes when they're all having fun and in the last two episodes, and maybe like it, I may basically I might watch five or six episodes, um, whatever's top rated, you know, one of the best fights or the best moments, because there's some fucking crazy shit, as you probably can tell. And then the last two episodes, definitely. And then I'll skip straight over to um, season four to actually keep the ball rolling, because I have watched Stardust Crusaders um, before. I just wanted to rewatch season two because I just love that Pelham shit. Um, Adaman says the Star Wars thing is really odd now that you mention it I simply don't enjoy the movies since they lost the plot however for anybody who enjoys Star Wars I would recommend the Clone Wars animated series the characters and stories are lovely and they got everything in the prequels oh they got everything right that the prequels tried to capture off topic Star Wars joke knock knock read more who's there Raja Roger who? Roger Roger oh for fuck's sake get out of my chat okay dude thank you very much Adaman um yeah, I, uh, I'll tell you what, those um, Clone Wars, and I'm not knocking you at all, mate, those Clone Wars animated series did not look interesting to me at all. I'm not a fan of, uh, I don't want to call it cheap, because that's probably unkind, but um, basically I'm not a fan of not high-end CG animation that's used in a weekly basis for the sake of like a, a kid's TV show. I just... It doesn't ever really do it for me. I just don't massively like that style. However, I've heard that the Clone Wars later series does improve massively. I've just not really given it a chance. However, what I will certainly stop and say, and you've probably heard this from other people before as well, um, the guys from Cartoon Network, and I think the same guy who did the animation um, by Samurai Jack, this guy has a, like, I can't tell you his name. Okay, do you know what? I need to find this guy's name. Because he's going to be worth Google. Key animator, Samurai Jack, and Clone Wars. So they did a cartoon, not a CG animated one, but the first thing, Gendy Tartakovsky. Okay, Gendy, G-E-N-N-D-Y, Tartakovsky, T-A-R-T-A-K-O-V-S-K-Y, a Russian-American animator. Basically, uh, he was the lead animator on uh, the Clone Wars animated series for Cartoon Network. There are a load of little short episodes, but there's tons of them. This was before the CGI animated Clone Wars that kind of stole the title. And this Clone Wars is fucking dope. It's the one that's got... You've probably seen this awesome scene where Mace Windu is on a battle fighting in the Clone Wars. And he loses his lightsaber. So he does like Force-style Wing Chun combat on the robots. It's so good! Anyway, that is my recommendation. Uh, anyway, sorry, let me come back to the chat. I just wanted to um, get this guy's name because I actually personally want to look into his life a little bit and look at more of his work because he's got a thing about the rhythm. It's just a rhythm of the night. Oh, yeah. Uh, Victor Capel says, Scary Spooky Games? Devotion. It's the game you want. Ah, oh, fuck. I think that's the one I was saying that I couldn't... Um, that I can't play because I... Is it, is it available again on Steam? I'm just going to look at Devotion on Steam. Bear with. So you can get the Devotion soundtrack. So I'm just loading up the Steam website. Let me just search this. Uh, 
No, it's not there. There's Dark Devotion, a completely different game. There's Devotion, the soundtrack, but they still don't have Devotion, the game. They pulled the game off Steam because there was some anti-Chinese sentiment uh, in like one of the key assets. So China review bombed it. Uh, and you know, for the national pride of China and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, yeah, yeah, dude, it's not happening. Fuck. Damn it. How do I get my hands on? Anyway, too late. Uh, Whisper King says, I'm in college and I've recently changed my major from mechanical engineering to art. Oh, dude, that's very brave. Mate, I hope that goes really well for you, dude. Quite frankly, the work was so stressful and I didn't enjoy having to come to the conclusion that I probably romanticized the career entirely. Dude, I can absolutely fucking relate to that. I um, took architecture at university. And when I was like in the second year, I was just like, I don't think I want to take this to diploma. Oh, no. When I was in the second year doing diploma, I was just like, I don't think I want to take this to a full undergraduate degree. I don't think I enjoy this. And it wasn't that I didn't enjoy building design. I fucking hated the studio I was in, especially at the end. My teachers, they were fine people, by the way. Um, but like our teachers were just practicing architects. And they were never available, and our studio had no direction on our coursework. It was an absolute fucking mess. Our studio had one of the lowest pass rates out of all the studios. And then those teachers stopped teaching the next year. They didn't run another course. So everybody who was in my studio was just like, fuck, I don't think I like architecture or studying it anymore. And by then, I was taking Japanese on the side, and I was just like, well, I'm still coming to this university, but I'll be fucked if I'm turning up into this classroom. Uh, so that's when I realized I really like studying languages and talking to people uh, instead of just like working with a load of relatively insular people like doing building design. And some of them, some of them are so up there. Not. By the way, many of them were fucking lovely. Most of them were fucking lovely, but some of them were a little bit up their own asses. And then this girl that I was seeing at the time that I was quite into, even she was just like, Do you know what? I don't think I'm going to come back to England for the third year. I think I'm just going to study elsewhere. And I was just like, yeah, I don't blame you. I guess that means we're over. <laughs> I was just like, oh, for fuck's sakes. But hey, swings and roundabouts back in the day. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean about loving the idea of a course. Then you start to do the course and you're just like, oh, this wasn't quite what I thought it was. And I think because you're still formulating who you are as a human being when you're at university age, like 18 to 21 ish. Uh, and so like, at the end of that, I was like, I think I pretty much know what I like in life now, but I did not know that when I was picking my course at the age of 18. Anyway, sorry, ramble side thing, but dude, I can relate. Anyway, uh, I've been listening to you for a while now, and you help me relax a little bit whilst the anxiety continues to build inside of me. Lols, have a great day, you awesome human being. Whisper King, I wish you the best. Welcome on over to the side of studying art. Um, yeah, kind of less stressful, um, but there's, it's a crazy different world. There's so many things you can get involved with. So I hope it treats you really well, man. Uh, David Reyes says, wait, no lewd art? What? For the first time in forever. David Reyes Jr. Hey, man. Yeah, no lewd Nizuko. Um, you know, what? I get the exact same comments whenever I randomly start drawing guys. If I draw a guy, people are just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> what happened to Mikey? Uh, Sierra Feye Enriquez says, I think that Dark Souls-like game you're referring to is blasphemous. It really is a great game. Excellent, Sierra. Yeah, that seems to be the vibe. Blasphemous it is. And Creepyman01 says, I recommend that you play Layers of Fear. Oh, yeah. The one with the painter, right? It's a unique horror game thriller. It wasn't that scary, um, but I didn't play it for a second time, and I'm probably not going to because I need a better PC. Oh, dude, I'm awfully sorry. Also, Outlast 1 and 2. Get out. No Outlast, thank you. Um, yeah, Layers of Fear 2 is out. I think I bought Layers of Fear once. Sorry, Layers of Fear 1 in Steam. It was basically free on Steam for a limited window. So I bought it and added it to my basket. No, my Steam account. But I never had a computer that was able to play it until just now when I've got the new PC. So hopefully it's still sitting in my Steam account and I can just install it. Uh, Shadow Quacker says, bad news, Mikey. The Kimetsu no Yaiba train arc is an upcoming movie, uh, which those of us in the UK will probably not be able to see legally. The series is over! Oh, no. I'm sure they'll translate it, dude. They they must eventually do a licensed translation, simply because Kimetsu no Yaiba is so popular over in uh, the Western side as well. Like, it would make money. Uh, Crime Paint says, For good horror and scary games that aren't too long, I would suggest Soma and Outlast. Uh, Out Outlast 1 and the DLC, but not to Outlast 2 because it's crap. Uh, the Evil Within. Oh, fuck, dude, shit the bed. I've No, also, when I was just talking about Alien Isolation and so on, uh, I also played the evil with him. Um, it was actually so terrifying, especially the bit in the mansion. That's the bit that really got me. The bit in the mansion where, um, like, 
the guy appears and if he touches you you die but whenever he appears it like it gets really statically and it's these screams are really loud in your headphones that and the you know the hair lady with all the hair in the blood the hairy spite you know what i'm talking about you know exactly what i'm saying anyway when i completed the evil within i think like the next day i just uh, wrapped it all back up and i sold it because i did not want the cd in my house like it really fucked me up uh anyway you've got some more suggestions resident evil 2 remake love that game only played leon no only completed it on Claire, so we do need to play Leon. Uh, Cry of Fear. Oh, I don't know that one. Dark Deception. I'm Scared. Condemned Criminal Origins and Alien Isolation. Dude, thank you for this list. Copied accordingly. Uh, and Oko Gutung HT says, "'Tis a false alarm, soldiers. Call back for crusade." Oh, is that me just dodging bullets again by not doing sexy Nazuka? Okay, thank you very much. And Marlo Navarro says the anime is called Keijo, and it's actually good. Is it, Marlon? Is it, Marlon Navarro? Is it actually good? I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. When your main premise is women fight each other by bouncing their boobs and bums off of each other, that's usually a warning sign that the anime is not that good at all. Uh, or at least my version of what I enjoy in anime is probably a bit bit more evolved i don't know i won't say evolved because that sounds condescending but um for somebody who draws lots of boobs and bum in anime for a living uh i don't necessarily just appreciate that without anything good actually existing in anime because it's just like well once you get over the visuals is there actually anything interesting happening do i care about these characters or the story so you've always got to have all of it and this kind of falls falls back to another thing that we talked about a really really long time ago although the question's still out there i will usually um, accept bad art if the story and the characters is really good and really compelling but I won't for very long accept amazing art in a manga story that's really badly written and with really disinteresting characters um, so yeah I just I kind of that's my overall theming attitude and I think that falls into really similar stuff if there's loads of hot waifus um, then great fantastic but if I'm not actually interested at all in the story either then I'm just like well okay I'll look at some screenshots from time to time, but I'm not going to sit there and actually give it, you know, my full attention. Uh, Always Icy says, it's not that scary or that long, and it's a co-op, but I would highly suggest We Were Here. Plus, it, there's a part two coming out, so it's a horror escape room game. Oh, interesting. I was, I'm going to try The Room on Steam, not via film. You're tearing me apart, Lisa! Oh, hi, Mark. Um, the Room looks like one of those kind of puzzle games from back in the day. Uh, where I think you have to escape, surprisingly, a room by solving puzzles. Uh, sexy Wii U. <laughs> sexy Wii U. <laughs> Fucking hell. Says, hey Mikey, hello there. Uh, one question, I'm really having trouble drawing the head from a bottom angle. Do you have any tips? Yes, I've got a very old drawing tutorial which is drawing the heads from angles, but also including a low angle look. And I know what you mean. Basically, when you start going really low angle, uh, the head just loses its kind of attractive form and you just get this kind of triangle shape of being right underneath the nose and nostrils with this really quick hook curve that follows the line over to the brow of the eye and then it sinks the eyes back in deep and then there's that really difficult relationship of drawing the draw, draw ring, the jaw line, um, against the underside of the jaw where it merges into the front of the neck and goes down. It's... Yeah, it's an, it's an absolute shit show sometimes. But um, yeah, I have actually tackled it before. However, that was like a bit of an older tutorial. I'm sure we will tackle it again in the future. Uh, Brewers Resources says, Bro, Mikey, you really helped me improve my manga and anime drawings. I just wanted to say thank you for your help. Hey, Brewers Resources. Hey, that's really kind of you, man. Oh, yeah, no worries at all, dude. No worries. Uh, do you know what? I think um, quite a few people from YouTube have just come over to Twitch because of the giveaway. Because when I've been doing my Twitch live streams recently, I've been meeting a lot of new faces out of nowhere. So I'm just like, oh, hey, guys, thanks for joining. Uh, and a load of people are just like, hey, I've been following your tutorials and they're really helpful and stuff. And I'm, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> that's really kind of you to tell me. Uh, yeah, dude, no worries. If what I do helps, that's great. Remember, like, all I'm really going to do is try to get you into drawing. I'm kind of a beginner's drawing tutorial guy. Um, we were talking about this the other day as well. Like, there are some incredible uh, people who would teach you how to draw very, very well, like Proco and others. Um, but, you know, if I can get you in through the gate and then pass you on to some more skilled people, then my job is done. Uh, Ryan says, or Ryan says, Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, it's a good visual novel if you're looking for psychological horror. It's a game of more subtle horror and there's loads of foreshadowing throughout the first act. Yeah, Ryan. I've mentioned it, by the way, it's a great suggestion, but um, the reason why I'm not that interested is simply because 
One, I know it takes a really, really long time, but two, I've actually watched every um, episode of the PewDiePie Let's Plays back when he was playing it, so I know, like, all of the surprises and all of the things that happen in the game and all the stuff that happens, you know, subtextually with your game files and so on. Um, and I was relatively satisfied by that, which is why you can kind of, you know, you can backseat a little bit and watch somebody else play a visual novel because... It's most. It's less about the actual mechanics of the gameplay itself, and more about the experience of the story. So I was quite satisfied by that, and I don't think I'm going to find the time to want to relive that entire experience from scratch. But thank you very much for saying so. Solid Snake says, "Mikey, I swear you break the fourth wall. How is it that you talk about an anime that I'm currently watching? It's Keijo, by the way, and watching that anime makes me lose my shit from laughing so hard. Oh, is it that super absurd? Well, there we go, guys. And uh, Alavik, I'm glad Solid. And Alavik Grim says, "I'm not quite good of my uh, spooky games." myself mate you and me both but i think alan wake has a nice sort of spooky atmosphere shadow versus light and all oh okay alan wake whenever i hear that i imagine it being like you know the alan parsons project or something like that how's your drink today oh it's very good thanks for asking let me have a sip how's your drink today guys guys if you are still listening to into this episode that means you are the hashtag hardcore crew you might not be aware but if you're hearing this you are the resistance. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And don't worry, we're not over or anything like that. Um, but uh, if you are working along in the background, you've got yourself a lovely bit of tea or coffee or a drink to help you guide your project work or whatever's going on. Have a lovely sip. I hope you're all doing bloody well. Oh, yeah. Remember, guys, please do feed me some of that knowledge for um, good monster girl waifus. Um, but also, if you know of any good spooky games whilst it's still on topic, or uh, any good indie games that I might not have heard of, as well as I'm always asking you about anime and manga and what you're drawing, get yourself in the comment section. Let me know, guys. Uh, Zero Dots says the 2D side-scrolling Dark Souls game would be Dead Cells or Blasphemous. Oh, somebody else suggested that I play Dead Cells. Uh, the one, that, thank you, it does help. One, the one that I was talking about was Blasphemous. But also, uh, there's like a really lovely game that I want to try. Oh, fuck, what is it called? Spirit, oh, Spirit of a Forest? Kiri's, Kiri's Forest Spirit? 2D side scroller forest. This is my Google search. Spirit game. Ori and the Blind. Oh, that was a good Google search. Ori and the Blind Forest has also been something that I've really wanted to try out as well. Excuse me, burping. Fantastic. We'll come back to those. And uh, OTS says, my scary game and indie recommendations are Cry of Fear. It's free on stream and it's inspired by the survival horror classics like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. So it's focused on psychological horror. Oh, I do like that. It's also a mod of Half-Life, so you should check it out. Oh shit, I've never... Guys, I don't want to surprise you, but I've never played Half-Life. Uh, I was never part of that Half-Life crowd. Because I didn't have a PC way, way back in the day when like those PC video games were really, really kicking off and changing the uh, landscape for everybody. Uh, and Ace 100 Times says, Hello again, Mikey. Hello there, Ace. I have a few recommendations for you, so I do apologise if my spelling is off. I typed it, but I can't be bothered to go back. Mate, that's my life. <laughs> that's my life there. And correct my mistakes. Uh, one is PT. It's a horror game. And be careful when you play this, because I wasn't even able to finish it. PT. Dude, in my day, PT meant playable teaser. And it was in relation to um, a Silent Hill video game that never got made. Or was it a Resident Evil video game? No, yeah, Silent Hill Playable Teaser, back when I was a kid, was a demo that got released. Uh, and then Sony pulled the project and they fired... Um, uh, oh God, who's the Japanese wunderkind of uh, video games? You know, the guy who's playing, who's, who's making... Um, who's the guy who's making Death Stranding? And he's responsible for incredible video games and most of the franchise uh, surrounding Metal Gear Solid. Hideo... Hideo something Shima? Hideo... Anyway, you guys probably know who I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, he got fired off a project and then because they scrapped it, they scrapped the demo. So are you talking about the playable teasers for Silent Hill? Are you trying to tell me it is now available? Because that has not been available for a very long time. Anyway, uh... 
Uh, number two anime recommendation is Carol and Tuesday. It's an anime that caught me off guard, so you know I'll just let you watch it. Oh, okay, thank you. And number three, since you're watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, yes I am, I have a challenge for you. Uh, Mikey, let's see if you can make some of the muscular men in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure into sexy anime girls. Ooh, I'll just make them muscly, sexy anime girls. Uh, that should be a real challenge. Uh, sorry it's so long. Okay, love you. <laughs> Love you, bye. Thank you very much. No, no, I'm going to copy all of this. Great suggestions. I'm going to have to look up that PT. Dude, you've kind of got me excited with the possibility that they have actually released the playable teaser again. Or, like, maybe somebody's remade it. Uh, also, says Jeff, SCPCB is a good choice, and it's quite hard to finish. Oh, now you're just saying letters, mate. Let me just Google this really quickly. Oh, no, let's open a new tab. Okay. SCP Containment Breach. Ah, okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you guys for these suggestions. Uh, Friendly Neighborhood Degenerate says, if you want a good horror game, try out SCP Containment Breach. Well, fantastic. That's literally what we've just been talking about. And, oh, oh God, guys, we are coming up on time. Let me just see if I can grab another comment as well. Um, uh, oh, yeah, guys, you're all just telling me that the last episode of Demon Slayer was the last episode of the se season after all. Yeah, I've, sadly, I've come to realize that. Uh, Nezuko, my precious sister, I die for thee. Yeah, I know it, Katie. Um, let's just have a really quick scroll. I'm watching on trying to watch. I'm starting to try to watch more anime, says Alex Henderson, uh, including Overlord and drawing my OCs for Veil, which is my own anime. Also, I'm White Rose from Twitch. Oh, awesome. Excellent. Enjoy your week. Well, I hope you enjoy yours as well. Um, guys, Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to hopefully catch another couple comments really quickly, but I thought instead of leaving it too late, let me just do a shout out to my delicious patrons on Patreon. As I said this weekend, we are doing Kohuo oh, Shinobu. I've said it really wrong. The Butterfly um, Demon Slayer. So hopefully that uh, fan art will be out. And that's going to be the September rewards pack. So that's going to be out really soon for you lovely people. Before I disappear off to Japan, of course. Uh, so great big shout out to Repair1997, Brett and F., Anthony C, Michael P, Ethanim, Ten Ten, Homongchi L, Akumu Arts, Jamie, Medissa, Zahaki, and Brendan J. Thank you so much, guys. I think we just recently, and nothing lasts forever, I do know that, but I think we just recently hit over a thousand patrons on Patreon, which is absolutely mind blowing. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. I'm working on that catch up. And then, of course, we've got to do all those kind of like, you know, riskier, riskier, sexy stuff for those high tier guys, the ones that I've just read out, going back quite a way. So it's going to be a very interesting time of drawing some uh, stuff and ting, let's put it that way. Safe for work? Not at all, um, when I come back from Japan. So guys, thank you so much for that support as ever. I really bloody love you bros. Uh, okay, that actually does give me a tiny window to read a few more comments. Maybe I should do that Maybe I should do that a little bit sooner in the future. It's probably a be better way not to have to suddenly squeeze it in. Anyway, Crackhead with a pencil says, I got all four endings on Sekiro. I beat it on hard mode. There's four endings! There's, oh my god, guys, so like, I'm still in Sekiro. Uh, I've definitely had a break, because it bullied me and, you know, really upset me with the Guardian Ape coming back. Uh, but I completed the Ape, and I did all the monkeys in heaven and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I've got the other sword that kills the unkillable, which is fantastic. But I think I was a bit of a loss. I think there's like this misty forest full of ghosts that I have to go through now, and it's kind of terrifying. Uh, so I did give that a break and I started playing Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is really charming and lovely and relaxing instead. But I do need to go back and get a bit more Sekiro in. But we've got so many video games that need doing. Uh, anyway, also MHA is My Hero Academia. Yeah, I'm really bad at getting those acronyms. It's my own fault. Um, Onion Bro says, I was waiting for four weeks for a stream and I still somehow missed it. Onion Bro, if you're hearing this, I might be live tonight playing the video games. Uh, and Vlad Plays says, the anime season is done, my friend. Oh yeah, guys, thank you very much. I'm so sorry for Kimetsu no Yaiba's over. But it does mean I need to do those fan out fan arts ASAP. Uh, Magul says, play Darkwood. It's terrifying and it doesn't use many jump scares. Oh, is it more psychological or pressure? Magul, thank you very much. Darkwood. Okay. Uh, and Resident Evil Biohazard is also an anime that I'd recommend. They made a Resident Evil anime. Kana's music stuff. Hello there. They made an anime. I've no one told me about this. I'm aware that there's like Final Fantasy anime out there and stuff. Holy shit. Uh, just play Minecraft. It will give you a heart attack, says Andes. So, oh my god, one of the very first uh, comments of this, today's episode was play Minecraft. And it's also one of the very last... <laughs> You Minecraft players, have you all gone through like a lot of psychological trauma then getting through that game? The thing is, is like, I'm pretty sure it's super, super addictive. And I'm not sure if I can actually play it because I think it might kill like all of my productivity going further down the line. And um, 
Hey Mikey, I've been wondering what's the motivation that keeps you on doing such beautiful artworks? Ethan Dillon, that's very kind. Let us know if you can be so kind, yeah? Ethan Dillon, I don't have much time, so let me just give you a super quick version. Um, I draw a lot of booby anime ladies and I also give myself a break and I explore other types of artwork and other methods in painting and drawing and sometimes I try to get a practice in like you might see now and many, many, many times I draw absolutely terrible art. Be aware that I often do terrible art as well. And that's basically it, dude. That's how I keep going along and doing my own thing. Nothing is ever too perfect, so I just forgive myself. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Tell me all about the uh, hot monster waifus and whatever you're up to. And I'm going to see you guys. Maybe not next week, hopefully. But definitely not the week after, sadly, because of Japan. But then we will be back, my friends. Take care. your heart